Hi, welcome back to Dominique Medici Art Academy. I'm Dominique Medici. Thanks for joining me. If you're new to my channel, on Monday and Wednesday, I upload a 20 minute instructional video. Each lesson builds on the one previous, and at the end of the year, you have a really solid foundation in drawing. If you're only just joining now, go back and watch the previous lessons, and then come and do this one. And of course, if you are enjoying them, please subscribe and tell your friends. At the end of every month, there's also a weekend workshop where we tie together all the month's lessons into one project. If you're interested, see a link in the description below to sign up. In day four, we introduced verticals, horizontals, and follow through lines. In today's episode, we introduce a new idea, triangulation. Let's jump into the episode. Over the course of time, I'll introduce new resources, talk about materials, and I'll always try to link them in the description below. So I got this amazing new wireless 3D printer. It's not actually out on the market yet. I have a good friend here in Seattle that, you know, got me a prototype, but let me show it to you. So this is it. it what it can do is incredible. I, I know it looks remarkably like a paint can, but um, you know, it is very expensive. So it, it's kind of important to, you know, keep it, keep it under wraps. So let me just show you what it can do. For example, all I would need to do is like, just ask for um, a definition of triangulation. And, and there we are. So is it, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. I was gonna put that back here. Okay, so triangulation. It's a little wordy. Maybe I'll just get to the important bit, which is uh, the tracing and measurement of a series or network of triangles in order to determine the distances and relative positions of points spread over a territory or region. So I think what that in plain English means is like if I were to connect this point and this point, the edge of the shadow, the end of this bowl, and then I extended these two angles up where they meet, where those angles intersect, is a way of triangulating and finding a position. That's my understanding, but that's also how I would use it in, in artistic means. Let's see. Especially by measuring the length of one side of each triangle and deducting its angles and the length of the other two sides by observation from this baseline. Let's take a look at how that idea kind of maps on to this drawing. Here we have our composition from yesterday, but now we also have an additional object. And so our composition is beginning to take form. We now have four objects. And what I would like to do is let's use triangulation to figure out the position of the bowl. I want to use two ideas one from a previous lesson and combine it with this new concept of triangulating. Now you'll remember that we drew a straight line through our glass. This helped us to get the symmetry of the curve of both sides of the glass. This line is actually kind of useful for us. Uh, what it marks is the uppermost boundary and the lowest on our composition so far. Now let's use those two points to find the edge of the bowl. This is gonna combine another idea from a previous lesson of a follow through line or an angle, right? I will mostly call them angles uh, or tilts moving forward, whatever, whatever word feels better for you. Now, of course I can see it here. But the important thing is what I could do is that just hold my pencil out and I can let it run from the center of the glass and just run this way. And I can just mentally think about that angle and think what time is it. So if I had a clock here, 
I don't know if any of us can remember what they look like, but if it was the long hand facing out, what time would that be? So maybe it's like 10 past the hour. So let's use a familiar concept to help us understand a new concept. This is one of my favorite things for determining angles. So one is just to kind of hold your pencil up and kind of scribe it over. But a better way is to conceptualize it and think about it using a very familiar concept. I think it's a great way to work. So what that will do is it will give us the angle. It won't necessarily give us how far out it is. But it's interesting because if we do the same thing from the bottom and we sort of guess the position out. Now, if we guessed further, those angles would be much further out, right? And if we guess this edge too short, then those angles are also going to be off. So somehow by looking at these two angles off of this center line or triangulating, it helps us to locate something. That's one way of thinking about it. The way that I actually usually think about this, for me, it's not so conceptual. Uh, I really just look at pattern. And what I mean by that is, you'll notice that this triangle that we draw here, it is a very specific kind of triangle. It's not equilateral, it's longer in this dimension. It is this part of the angle is a little more open than the top part. So it, it has a particular shape. And this is a concept that we will be exploring more and more and more. You remember when we started the first lesson, we kind of talked about this. We talked about this idea of gesture. This is a kind of form of gesture in the sense that that kind of shape, at least in my mind, it feels like something, right? It doesn't feel as solid and as stable as an equilateral. It feels different. It's tilted. None of the three angles are the same. So it has a very particular feeling to it. But when you think about it, at some point we'll start drawing faces. And even though they seem very complex, they can always be broken down into very simple shapes and simple rules. If we get used to doing this at this stage, then later on, we're gonna find it much easier. So we're learning how to abstract and simplify. Now, it's easy to do this on here, on the reference. And in fact, it's actually a good way to start. You can take your, some of your favorite paintings, for example, in an art book. Put a piece of tracing paper on top. Just look for these big abstract shapes that relate things to each other, right? We could have done the same thing on the outer part of this pair to find its relationship. And then just look at how those two angles, these two triangles, how they're very different. And the proportion reads very different, both as a shape, but also the distances and the angles right? The angles, the distances, and the shape, all three of those things, we can look at them all, put them together to figure out where we're going. Let's do the same thing here. Now, all I'm thinking about at this point is just getting that angle roughly correct. I'm not worrying about where it stops. I'm just, in a way, drawing from one edge of the page to the other. And I'm saying somewhere on that line is my bowl is going to touch. Now I'm going to do the same thing from this point, just looking at that angle. And then I'm going to, maybe I put this in too, of course. Then I'm going to draw this angle up. Now at this point, this is the next thing I want to do. I want to start comparing and you'll notice something right away that I did. For some weird reason, I started my angle way above the glass. That's super bizarre. So I'll just do it again, right? I'm coming down. Now, I think the angle was more or less fine, 
So it's just a matter of, yeah, maybe it's a little bit lower in fact. Okay, so I erase, I erase this out. Yeah, you never worry about mistakes. They're just, you just fix them, right? That's the easy bit. Something like that. Now, at this point, what I want to do is just start looking at this triangle and asking myself, does it look right? If I travel from this point to this point, and then I travel from this point to this point, does it feel like the right length? Do the angles work? And also, does that triangle shape look correct? In this case, what I want to do now is use a concept from a previous lesson to check my angles. Now, in this case, I want to take a horizontal. I want to run it through the point that I made where these two angles converged, and I want to check it against a placement in my main composition. Right? So in this case, if I bring over my horizontal, it's lining up with the top of the apple. Now, what I'm going to do is do the same thing on my drawing, bring over a horizontal, and check its position in relation to my triangle. So we're using two concepts to locate a position. This is something that we just do more and more and more in more complex forms. In a way, the drawings get more complicated, but the ideas remain the same. The ideas remain simple. And I think it's one of the things that we always love about great works of art is that they are incredibly subtle, incredibly beautiful, but underpinning them behind all that is some kind of simple idea. You know, it's so masterful that it appears effortless. I think that's that balance of working with simple ideas, but expressing them in very subtle ways. Okay. So we keep going with this. So now at this point, I'm getting a sense that the bowl finishes over there. Now we could triangulate to find this position. And we could also use, again, our verticals. So in this case, it seems pretty logical to just, let's drop a vertical here. And we can see that we're just a little bit outside of the apple. So that's, that's one thing we can do. That's easy enough. And so now we're establishing the width of the bowl. It does seem pretty obvious that the other edge would be here. So maybe we don't need to think about that one just yet, but let's, Let's triangulate to, say, for example, this position here. So if we wanted to find the center of the bowl, let's try and find this point right there. Again, let's work off of our, you could call this a focal measurement or an anchor measurement. That's what I like to call it, an anchor measurement. What that means is this is the one thing that stays the same. Everything else has to adjust to it because if we keep changing our relationships, um, our heights and our widths, then it never finds the proportion that it wants to be. But if we keep this one fixed, then we just adjust the widths until it reads properly. So that's the idea. So drawing an angle down here and then drawing over to here. I know it's getting a lot of lines on this page. It starts to look a little chaotic. So you could erase what you don't need. But again, let's take a look at this. So it's, it's a nice shape. So if I were to draw that triangle over here, right, we have this part, which is straight up. And then we come up at say, what degree is that? That's like 40, 
If that's 45, where do we like 47 minutes past the hour? Coming up to this point. What about this angle here? That's like, well, from here to here, that's like five past the hour, right? And they meet sort of here. So that triangle, if I bring it over here, looks something like that, right? It's a very specific shape. Here, let's take a look. So coming from this point, we come down. I'm just looking at the angle, making sure that it's in the right place, telling the right time. And then I start from over here, come on up. And now it's probably somewhere there. That's my guess. Now again, here's another idea that we introduced in a previous lesson. We can also measure over from that line using my thumb and tip of pencil and compare it to the width of the apple. Now it's just a little bit less than the whole width. And I can do the same thing here just to say if I'm guessing, guessing this point here, I'll take this measurement, coming over to the edge of the apple, then I will scribe it over and it, again, it looks pretty good. It finishes in about the same place just before the edge. There's another thing I can do. Now that we also have these two marks here, for the edges of the bowl, I could also just guess halfway. All right, and again, this comes back to an idea that we talked about much earlier, which is always a good idea just to go for it and guess and then verify through measurement after. I'll do the same thing. I'll now just check those measurements and look at that, right? It's pretty good. So we're using all three of these concepts to, in a way, be very redundant to develop our drawing uh, and rely on several ways to find the answers we're looking for. So this is good. This is the way to do it. Now we could also just bring a horizontal over to check where the bottom of the bowl is in relation to our other two objects. Now if I do that, what I can see is look at that. It's pretty much in alignment with the bottom of this pair. So again, it's another way to locate. So I'm dragging this line over. And it's very likely that the bottom of our bowl is here. And we know that because we discovered its placement with multiple techniques. So now we'll sketch it in. Okay, what about the top of the bowl? Again, same thing, we can draw a horizontal over to see what, does it line up with anything? And it looks like it's just below the glass where the glass starts turning up into the belly of the glass. Well, it's halfway through the stem of the glass. That's pretty good. Just above the apple, halfway through this, the stem. So that's kind of a nice, nice thing to do is just look for some point on your anchor measurement that makes sense. And then at the same time, we will verify that position with triangulation. So again, from the same point, we can draw down here. We can do it from the bottom again. So there's another thing that we should talk about is we are developing two things here. You'll notice we're developing points, right? These are points and the things that connect them are planes. So here on our pair, this is a point where these two planes, right? That plane and that plane meet. So one thing that I always, always, always like to do is when we see a curve or something like the pair here where, you know, it initially, it just looks like a curve. But what we should try to do is see these points of intersection, reduce curves to planes. 
because when we reduce it to a plane, we can then measure it. We can check it against a clock. Curves are very hard to draw. Planes are much easier to draw. And they give our drawing some structure. But the best bit is we can also relate these points to each other. And all these ideas work together in our drawing. Okay, we'll keep going here. Okay, now the top we said was roughly here. Now we could take a look. At, we have our center line of our bowl. So you can see how what we're doing is exactly what we did in a previous lesson with the glass. It's the same lesson, the first lesson, which is the circle. So these ideas repeat and refine and build on, e on top of each other. Now let's just check for these heights. How big is this part in relation to, say, this part? So several ways we can do this. One of them is, again, maybe we just take a horizontal from the front of the bowl and look over. Are there any interesting points of intersection that it crosses through? So here's one for sure, right? That's a good one. It's uh, right in the middle of our composition. We can really check it in relation to the height of the um, apple. It looks like it's about a quarter of the height of the apple. So we can somewhat indicate that with just a straight line, right? Like this, super easy. Bring it on over. Okay, so at this point, I think we have enough information to just kind of go for it. We don't need to map everything out to crazy degree. We're close enough that we can get into it. So this should feel very familiar at this point because here we have our cross, our center line, our horizontal, and we are trying to draw the opening of the bowl, this ellipse, and it's the same exercise we had in the first lesson because we're just trying to get these four quadrants, these four curves, looking the same. In a way, it's the same thing we have for the bottom of the bowl. We still have our center line, we have our outer boundary, and we are just sketching in these curves. And again, we want to keep things light initially. Right, the darker we go, the, you know, in a way, the harder it is to correct because if you press too hard, you could be indenting the paper. Um, we don't want to make grooves that will subtly kind of shift our pencil into the groove. Uh, keep it light. So what I'm doing is going back and just giving a little erase of the whole thing so that I can see a ghost of the image. And then that allows me to refine the drawing. This episode will be probably a little longer. It's getting a little, you know, there's a lot of ideas coming out in this one. And don't rush. It's very important to take as long as you need to get the ideas, get the lesson. This is one of the reasons that the weekend workshop is such a good way to practice because we we work on these ideas together, taking them much further, much deeper. Again, if that's of interest to you, do sign up. The uh, links are in the description below. It would be great to have you in the workshop. Now, I just guessed the width and I'm guessing it based on like how big it is in relation to the apple. I'm thinking it's like, you know, it's not as wide. It's not half. 
Maybe it's like two thirds, that's my guess. So I'll take a measurement, bring it on over, and it looks like, yeah, to the center line of the wine glass, to the edge of the pear, it kind of lines up pretty nicely as a width. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a different kind of measurement to take, but it works. At this point, I'll look around the rest of the drawing just to take a look if there's anything that looks a little bit off. Taking a few minutes just to refine the composition a little bit further, and then we're done. And there we have it, our very first still life. It's simple, but there's quite a lot of complex shapes and relationships. So we're getting a good feeling for how to deal with that. At this point, it's purely just linear. And the next step will be for us to start looking at the interior parts of these objects. So light and shade. But before we get to that, there is still some more that we can do in just working with a contour to describe a volume. This sets us up perfectly for the next lesson. What are we doing in the next lesson? Well, we're at a point where our composition is in place and we're almost ready to launch into talking about light and shade. But before we do that, there's something else that we should just try and do first. And we can describe a volume with just line if we do it carefully. That's what the next lesson is all about. Thank you for joining me. And again, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe and remember to tap the bell. It will notify you when new videos are uploaded and also all the materials that I'll be using and will be talking about in future episodes are all linked in the description below. All right, thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.